Welcome to Global Midweek. This week's episode, as they say on radio and television, is brought to you by Proverbs 69 that says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. You may ask, that's a weird way to start. Well, let me explain. Remember last week I talked to you about our plans for a soft landing and how we had different groups every week uh, scheduled to come? Well, last Saturday, five o'clock, two hours before we were supposed to meet with our group of ladies in English, we arrived at church to discover that three of our air conditioners were not working. And no matter what we did, no matter what David did up on the roof, what reset buttons he hit, nothing happened. By 5.30, it was evident that we would not get them fixed in time to cool the building down before the service. And believe me, the building was hot. So we've taken that as a sign and we've moved the entire schedule one week. So here's the new schedule. And for the soft landing and Lord willing, this will be what we will follow. But if not, hey, we have learned to be flexible, if nothing else, during this time. Today will be our final episode of Global Midweek in its current format. We began gathering back on April 2nd, and it was informal. It was to find a way of sharing announcements and encouragement as we entered that stay-at-home season of the pandemic. Well, we're now entering a different phase, and we're calling it, as you well know, our soft landing stage. These are different, smaller segments of our congregation are, are being asked or invited to come and gather weekly. We're learning to navigate the new normals of life together at six feet apart. And but we're going to continue our current format of Global Online and Global Kid Zone for at least the next month and maybe even longer. But our midweek will take a break and we will change gears to what we're going to call a midweek study. And for that, we're going to pick up a book by Chip Ingram entitled The Real God. I want you to take a, just a couple of minutes and watch the introduction to this series and why I think it will be so important. Pay attention to this video. There is a deep sense of unease in our rapidly changing world. We all know something has been lost, but we don't know why or where it all leads. Popular culture tells us it is all about me and that we should worship our creations rather than the creator. In politics, the end justifies the means. In relationships, love means self-satisfaction. In life, status and appearance are what count. In the church, confusion replaces clarity and conviction. Our faulty and distorted view of God is at the root of all our problems within and without. But what if we viewed God differently? What if we saw him the way he longed for us to see him? Instead of worshiping a comfortable golden calf of our own creation, we can worship a God that is holy, wise, and just, one whose faithfulness and goodness are matched by his power and sovereignty over all things. This is a God that can deliver us from evil and transform lives. This is a God worth worshiping. The way back, the path of hope, starts with knowing God for who he really is. We need to know the real God. Hi, I'm Chip Ingram with Living on the Edge, and welcome to the Real God series. I can't wait to share with you what God has been teaching me about what He's really like. The Real God is a series where you're going to look at seven core attributes of who God actually is. In fact, as I taught this, I thought it's the greatest, most important subject on the earth, because how you view God, how I view God, it changes everything. 
your perspective of life, of relationships, of the future, issues like worry and fear, they're all rooted in who we think God is. I've seen God use this study in people's lives like few others I've had the opportunity to teach. So let me encourage you, get your Bible and uh, get that workbook and let's dig in together. Back in the summer of 2018, when Beverly and I were on sabbatical and biking through uh, Belgium and France and Spain, I took this book, The Real God. And to be honest, it's not a book that you read a whole chapter at a time. At least it wasn't for me. It was one that I would read two or three pages, find the passages of Scripture that may have been talked about in that, meditate on that, chew on that, and then the next day move on to the next one. For eight weeks, we'll be going through this book together, and I will be giving a short lesson on seeking God and the goodness of God, the sovereignty of God, the holiness of God, the wisdom of God, the justice of God, the love of God, and the faithfulness of God. Each of these characteristics will help us come to know God in a deeper way. And in turn, it will help us understand His Word and it will help us understand His ways. Now, I'll be teaching these lessons each week. And if you just want to listen to that, that's fine. And I think there will be some things that you'll be able to learn. But if you want to get even more out of this study, then I would encourage you to buy the book and read along with us. You can pick up the book from a ministry called Living on the Edge Ministries, which is headed by Chip Ingram, the author. Or you can get the book in Amazon or Christian book distributors. Or if you'd rather go locally, you might call Lucianos here in town. They may actually have it in English also or be able to order it for you. But get the book. And as I did a couple years ago, read it carefully, stop, meditate on it, get to know what it is, and enjoy this time. If you're signed up for it, as we make it available for everyone, Right Now Media also has a series of videos by Chip Ingram. In fact, I will be following much of the, many of the points in his outline, but it's always different when you hear things come out of the author's mouth itself. So you could go to Right Now Media and follow along in the studies that he gives on each one of the chapters. And if you have kids at home, you have young people at home, I would ask you to consider doing the family devotionals and discussion questions together. Both of these are available again at Right Now Media or Living on the Edge Ministries. And they have some items that are free and things that you can just download and listen to and, and questions to go through together. Why? Because it's important that not only you know the real God, but that you discuss this with your children, with your young people. You know, the last few weeks, I've been answering questions for our children's church on Kids on Online. And let me tell you something, they're asking some good questions. And if they're asking me the good questions, I'm sure they have the questions at home also. If you could just work on these things together and together get to know the real God just as He wants to be known. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war I confess My hands are weary I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, your 
Truth is, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So, in our love, be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm near. I would like us to finish this evening with the same verse that we began. Proverbs 69 says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. You know, some people look at this as a negative. They say, you know, God won't let me do what I want to do. But I'd like you to think about that a little more. It says that the Lord determines our steps. In the Lord's Prayer, as Jesus was teaching the disciples how to pray, the second part of the prayer says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Elizabeth Elliot, the wife of, of a missionary who was killed many years ago in Ecuador that was mentioned in the book Through Gates of Splendor, he, he mentioned she, she said something that I read the other day, and it was very, very good. It said this, To pray thy will be done, I must be willing, if the answer requires it, that my will be undone. In other words, sometimes what I want and what God knows is best aren't always the same thing. And so as we go through this idea of we make our plans, and yes, we should plan. But as we make our plans and let the Lord determine our steps, that should be a good thing. Last Saturday evening, uh, all of us that are on the staff were, were gathered around. We were there early getting things started. And this came up about the ACs. And as we talked about it and we prayed about it and we called the people involved that could maybe fix it. And we came to the realization, this isn't going to happen. And we better let our people know now before they start coming. And we sent out texts. Maybe you received it. it. It didn't say a lot. It just said, hey, we're not going to be meeting this weekend. And you know what? Among us, we all said, we don't understand this. We don't know what's going on. But maybe the Lord is protecting us for something. 
Maybe the Lord is doing something here that even though we do not understand, we trust in Him. Before we left that evening, about 8 o'clock, the ACs were fixed. And in fact, it's nice and cool right now. We're not sure exactly what happened, but we know one thing. God determined our steps and we are happy to go along with what God has for us. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says the following, and I'll read it from the New Living Translation. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Did you catch that last part? Then you will get to know God's will. And God's will for you is good, pleasing, and perfect. See, God's will for you and me, the, the, the steps that he determines for us are what we would choose if we had the advantage of knowing everything that lies ahead. Let's continue to make our plans, but let's gladly surrender to the steps that God determines for our lives, knowing that with the advantages of hindsight, we will see that what he had for us was good and pleasing and perfect. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you and we are so grateful that you understand and know what is best for us at every stage of the game. Lord, we make plans and we should make plans. It is wise to make plans. But Lord, more importantly than our plans, we should surrender to your steps, surrender to your will, that we may be able to pray confidently every time, Lord, I want your will to be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. I want your will to be done more than my will to be done. Lord, I'll be honest, sometimes that's easier said than done. But Lord, in the times that we do, in the time that we willfully surrender to you and your will, it is always the best. So I pray that you would continue to guide us, guide us as individuals, guide us as families, guide us as a church. Lord, guide our country. Help us, dear Lord in these times of need. We want your will to be done. And Lord, we will thank you for that in your precious name, amen. Thank you for joining me in my home these past few weeks. I hope and pray that you'll join me again on Wednesday night, June 24th, as we study the real God. Thank you.